everyone, thanks for tuning in. You're watching In Deep on the Delta. Today I'm going to be out here doing another cast to catch video. But the fishing has been tough. I've had to work for every fish I've been catching. I'm going to stick to two or three areas that I've been fishing and I'm going to really work those areas. And if I catch some fish, I'll, I'll stop the action and show you guys what I'm using, where I'm fishing, and why I think the fish are there. So let's do it. Let's see what happens. I just got my first bite on a white spinnerbait out on a tule point here. And I'm gonna be really meticulous about just throwing this thing through every piece of tule that I can find that I can get this thing through there. That one was on the outside. I'm gonna really fish on the inside. I'm gonna keep the camera on. I know I've got a bad angle with the sun, but if I get a big one, I wanna get it on uh, camera. We get around this point, it'll get better. Uh, the filming will get better in just a minute. It's not a big one, but it's the first one of the day, and I got it right in the same spot that I had that first bite. So, 10 minutes into the day, I got a pound and a quarter fish. I'm not going to complain, the fishing's been tough. All right, we got a little better cam camera angle so I can explain a little bit what I'm doing here. I'm expecting that I'm going to get a few more bites, so I'll explain what's going on. I'm using a half inch white spinner bait, white blades with a fluke trailer, and I'm being really methodical and just fishing inside, outside, through the tulees, through everywhere I can get that thing in. So let's see if we can get another fish or two. All right, just got another small fish on a white spinner bait and it just came out of the grass. I'm having to do everything I could possibly do to get these fish to bite. They're not big fish, but I'm thankful that I'm getting them. And as I'm reeling in, I may move to the back of the boat or I may move to the front of the boat or move the rod in one direction. And I want this bait to come up and touch the edges of the tulies. And sometimes that's a difference. Another thing you might want to think about is if you're using a bait that you can have a visual contact on, make sure that you always watch that bait. Looking for fish coming up and refusing it or just taking it or, or just maybe slapping at it but not taking it. That's giving you clues that maybe you got the wrong bait or maybe it's uh, uh, too slow or too fast of a retrieve. But Little things like that are going to make the difference on a day like today. Here's a little trick you can use when you're fishing a tule clump like this and you want to get in close. You can see how the wind's blowing. So that's going to allow me to throw the bait over the top of the tule clump, let the wind blow a sail into my line and then drop my line and bring it right along the edge. Let's see if I can do that. Right out here, let my line blow over the top and now when I reel in it's going to come right into that tule clump and right along the outside edge. That time it didn't pay off but the difference between what I just did and throwing my spinnerbait out here by the time I get it into uh, around those tulies or the vegetation, it's already 10 feet out from the side. So just remember to keep an eyeball where the wind is. Sometimes you can use that wind as an advantage to blow your line over the tulies, then drop your rod tip, and then start your retrieve and let your lure, whatever it is, a spinnerbait or chatterbait, come a lot closer to the vegetation.
This may not be the most exciting part of the video, but I think it's the most important part of the video, at least for me, uh, sharing information with, with you guys that are going to help you to catch fish. But we're going to talk about the offshore ledges on two Leonis. We're going to primarily be talking about fishing with a spinner bait or a chatter bait. And I want to just verify that when I talk about offshore on the delta and deep water, it's relative. It doesn't mean that we're out in the middle of the channel when I say we're offshore, and it doesn't mean we're in 25 feet of water. You have to remember that uh, the bass here in the delta spend most of their entire life in probably less than 10 or 12 feet of water. So a fish that is in two feet of water and it moves down to four feet of water, that's a huge depth change for that particular fish. So four feet of water would be deep water. And that ledge that may be off that Thule Island, it may only be 10 feet off the bank. So everything is relative. The now, fish on these ledges are usually in a little deeper water, and those, which means that those are the fish that a lot of times that are going to be a little easier to catch, especially in conditions where you have a unstable barometer and the fish are a little tight-lipped to start with. The fish that may be in two feet of water compared to the fish that are in deeper water, those shallow fish are going to be much tougher to catch. The fish that are in the deeper water uh, on the on the drop-offs are going to be a little easier to catch and they're also going to hold in those areas throughout the tide so uh, those will pan out a little better at low tide and in situations where you can't get up and fish the shallow water. Now everyone can spot tule berms and, and logs and things like that and they're going to catch a few fish. The people that really do their homework and find these ledges, those are the people that are going to not only catch a couple of fish, they're going to really produce fish uh, more consistently. They're probably going to get bigger fish. The ledge can be two feet off the bank. It can be 20 feet off the bank. The ledge can go from two feet to three feet. It can go from two feet to six feet. We're generally going to be looking for the ledges that have at least the double a double amount of drop off than what's at the top of the ledge. So if we're on a ledge that uh, there's two feet of water, I like to find a ledge that goes down to four feet. Or if it's five or six feet, that's great. If that ledge comes out, and that's a ledge that comes out like this, and it drops down like this. The ledges that are gradual that come out and drop from two feet down to three feet like this, those are the ledges that I probably am not going to really pay a lot of attention to. When you find these ledges out here and they're running down the backside of these Thule Islands, they don't run in a straight line. So to find them, you have to go in and find the deeper water, go into the shallower water with your trolling motor and serpentine up and down the bank and find that ledge. Now what you're going to find is that ledge will be moving in and out and in and out. And you're also going to find that only a few spots on that ledge are going to hold fish. If the bank is 150 yards long, there's only going to be maybe two or three spots that have that nice uh, depth change. They're in the right spot out of the current and they're going to hold fish. Now figuring that out is going to take a little bit of time, but if you know where those ledges are and you come back to these banks and you know that um, when I find a ledge like that, I look for anything, any type of structure that I can find that's going to tell me right where it's at. So if there's a telephone pole on the other bank that it's right across from a particular telephone pole, or maybe a set of pipes, or maybe the island point, I know it's 20 or 30 feet down from the island point, I really try to get a landmark to figure out right where that uh, ledge is. So when I come out here, and I know that that ledge is out here, I'm going to go right to that ledge and fish it, whereas another person, they may have to fish this entire bank and they may pass that ledge and not even know it, or they, they may ne never find it. So finding these ledges is very important and making sure you have them marked, it's very important. Look for the more dramatic ledges that drop off. You can throw spinner baits, you can throw chatter baits. If you find those ledges, you can throw top waters over them. As long as you know where they are and you can put whatever bait it is in that vicinity, you're going to have a good chance of catching them, the fish, as long as those fish are active. Now you may get 30 or 40 feet to one side of those, use the same bait on the same day, and they're not going to bite because those fish are moving up and down those ledges. That's how they get from one end of the, uh, of the um, island to the other. They don't go willy-nilly, you know, swimming around out in the middle and pull up on the, uh, the point. 
they'll generally go out to the first deep water ledge and move up and down that ledge to move up and down the bank looking for food looking for security looking for uh, vegetation or something that they can get into and, and they use these ledges all the time the other thing that i want to talk about especially if you're using a um, a chatterbait or a spinnerbait is your retrieve speed and it doesn't always come up in um, in the videos what I'm doing or what other people are doing it may not even come up if you're out with a guide or fishing a pro-am tournament the guide in or the guy in the front of the boats catching all the fish you're not catching anything it may have a lot to do with his retrieve speed not cadence not you know anything it's retrieve speed so I throw this up in two feet of water I've got vegetation I may have to bring that out the first 10 feet at, a, at, at this uh, speed as soon as I get the bait out to where I think that drop off is instead of going here I'm gonna stop it and then maybe slow it down you want that bait to be as close to the bottom as you can and as this drop off here if you don't change your speed it's gonna go right over the top of them if the fish are sitting down here the baits gonna come up here now if they're very aggressive they may come up and grab it if these fish down here are not aggressive when you pull that spinner bait down here and it gets to where you think the uh, the drop off is and you stop reeling and slow it down let it fall down into the fish and these fish that are may may not be so aggressive are going to take them up on uh, take those baits when they get down to maybe within a foot or two of where they are then they may be aggressive enough to come up and grab it so All right, that's getting a little better. Man, Woo. Uh, I've switched from having a about a four foot leader to straight braid, and I'm getting a lot better feel, and it's coming through the weeds a lot better. With the water clarity the way it is, I'm gonna stick with straight braid. better on a chatterbait. Let's see if we can get something going. I threw it from outside in, pulling it over. As soon as it got to that, say, three to five foot ledge, the fish came out from under the ledge and picked it up. All right, I think I'm going to tap out for the day. Uh, I had some fun. Wish I caught a few, could have caught a few more fish, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you got some information uh, that will help you come out here and, and help you guys to maybe catch a few more fish. Uh, with that being said, 
there are so many different ways to fish these banks, so many different baits, so many techniques, so many philosophies. Don't think that what I'm talking about here is the only way to run these banks. Make sure you check out as much information as you can, uh, talk to as many people as you can, and, and put as much time on the water as you can, and that's really how you're going to get to be uh, a more uh, successful fisherman whether you're out here on the Delta or, or any other lake. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys at the next video. Maybe we'll see you out here on the water and I hope you have the time to get out and, and do some fishing. So let me know what you catch and uh, we'll see you guys at the next video.